In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at tail scale and why you might wanna to switch to it if you're currently using Quick Connect. Now, I'm not gonna to go too deep into what exactly tail scale is because there's a great blog post that explains it in detail, but in essence, tail scale is a VPN service that utilizes the WireGuard protocol so you can securely access devices using encrypted point-to-point -point connections. While you won't be configuring WireGuard itself, you'll be able to set up a fully functional VPN with absolutely no port forwarding and securely access all of your devices on your local network. This makes Talescale a great option for people who can't or don't feel comfortable port forwarding. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Talescale, I suggest that you check out that link in the description, but for now, we're just gonna move on to installing it. On your Synology NAS, open the Package Center and search for Talescale, then install it. When it's done installing, open it and it's gonna then ask you to log in. After you log in, you can go back to your Synology DSM and then you can launch the Talescale application. At this point, you actually will see that you have an IP address assigned to this device. That is literally the configuration. At this point, your Synology NAS is set up to be accessed remotely. So on a different device, you can use a mobile device, you can use a, uh, a laptop, whatever it is, you just have to be on a separate network than your Synology NAS. Download the Talescale application and log in as well. On that device, you're gonna see that you have access to the device that we just set up, which is our Synology NAS. At that point, you're gonna have to connect to the VPN on that device, and what you're gonna see is if you open up a web browser and you type in the IP address that they assigned to DSM, and the port you use for DSM, the default one is 5000 and 5001, but you might have changed this. So just make sure you're using whatever you're currently using on your local network. You should get to the login page of DSM. So at this point, if you simply say, I just wanna be able to access DSM securely outside of my local network, you're done. That's the long and short of it. However, you can move on to the next step, which is gonna be connecting to other devices on your local network. And I would suggest that you at least hear this out because you'll probably be happy with the functionality if you do decide to go down this route, but you don't have to. If you're happy with the functionality that we just looked at, then you can literally stop at this point and you'll be able to access your NAS from outside of your local network securely. Now this next step is gonna allow you to access other devices on your local network through your Synology NAS. So what I mean by that is if you have a PC or you have a Raspberry Pi or you have just about anything on your local network, you're gonna be able to securely access it using that local IP address through Talescale. Now this is slightly more complicated in the sense that you have to SSH into your Synology NAS, but SSHing into your Synology NAS is extremely simple. I have a two minute video that I'll leave a pop up for now. So just go through, watch that video and get to the point where you've SSH'd in because you simply have to run one command. And the command is gonna be sudo tailscale up, which is gonna bring up our VPN protocol on this Synology NAS. And then this next command is gonna be advertise routes. Now this route here, I have listed 192.168.1.0 forward slash 24. That is your local IP address subnet. So what I mean by that is if you access your NAS by the IP address of 192.168.1.50, you know that the local subnet you're using is 192.168.1. If you connect to your NAS using 10.5.0.50, you know the local subnet is 10.5.0. So you have to go through and customize this command with whatever local subnet you're using. After that, there are two additional command line parameters you're gonna to have to use, which is advertise exit node, which we're gonna take a look at in a minute, and reset, which is just resetting the tail scale connection if it's currently up. Now, after you run that command, you should receive the result success, which means that you successfully advertise the route and the tail scale VPN is back up. Now, after you do that, you're gonna to have to log into the admin portal. So you can log into the admin portal before this as well. It just allows you to access all the devices that you currently have assigned to your Talescale account. But we're actually gonna need it here because we're gonna to have to edit our route settings. So in the written instructions, I have the link that you have to access, but it's just the default Talescale page where you can go and log in there. But after you log in, you're gonna see your devices that you have. So I have two machines set up right now. And under our DSM machine, you're gonna see that the subnet we just defined is there. 
Now we have to go through and basically confirm this. So what you need to do is select the three little dots next to our DSM interface and select edit route settings. Inside of that, you wanna enable both options, the subnet routes and the exit node. We're gonna take a look at the exit node in a second, but after you enable these options and save, if you take out your mobile device again and you connect to your Tailscale VPN, you should be able to access your NAS using the local IP address that you normally do. Now, not only will you be able to access your Synology NAS using that local IP address, you're gonna be able to connect to any devices on your local network using their local IP address. So at this point, you should have full access to your entire local network using Tailscale. Now, for simplicity's sake, everything we did up to this point was utilizing a split tunnel VPN. A split tunnel VPN will send only local traffic to your local devices and it will send all of your other traffic directly to it. So what that means is if you try and navigate to google.com, it's gonna automatically go straight to google.com. It's not gonna use Telscale at all. A full tunnel VPN is different. It routes all of your traffic through that VPN tunnel. So if you're on a public Wi-Fi, for example, it's a good idea to use a full tunnel VPN because you're ensuring all of your traffic is going through that secure VPN tunnel. The way that you can enable a full tunnel VPN on Tailscale is by utilizing an exit node. The way that you can utilize an exit node is on the device that you're connecting with. What you'll have to do is in the settings, you're gonna have to use the exit node option. And after you select that, you're gonna see that you have a few different options. You have allow LAN access, and that's how you're gonna be accessing all of your local devices. But underneath that, you're gonna see none, and you're gonna see your Synology DSM. If you select DSM, what that means, is it's gonna route all of your traffic through that tail scale tunnel, which will be a full tunnel VPN. So for the two options that you have there, none will be a split tunnel VPN, and then the DSM option will be a full tunnel VPN. So that's how you can switch between the two. Now that's the long and short of tail scale. You literally have configured the entire thing. If you weren't watching this video, it probably would have taken you a few minutes at most, but you're able to securely access all of your devices on your local network using a split tunnel or a full tunnel VPN. Now I quickly wanna discuss Tailscale versus Quick Connect because a lot of people that are using Quick Connect will probably have just as easy of a time setting up Tailscale as they did Quick Connect. The benefit to Tailscale, and the reason I think I like Tailscale a little more than Quick Connect, is that you're able to access all of your services. So if you're using Quick Connect to access Synology Drive, for example, you can quickly and easily connect to Synology Drive using your Quick Connect ID. However, you can only connect to the Synology services. So if you set up Plex Media Server, you're gonna find out really quickly that you're not able to connect to it. With Tailscale, as soon as you set it up, it's gonna be like you're sitting in your house. So you're gonna be able to access Plex, you're gonna be able to access any Docker containers that you have. You're gonna be able to access all of the main benefits of why you might wanna set up a VPN without any of the port forwarding or configuration. The one caveat is that if you have multiple people connecting to your NAS, you're probably gonna have to stick with Quick Connect because unfortunately, as of right now, the free tier of Tailscale only allows for one account. But regardless, if you're using Quick Connect, it might be a good idea to consider at least setting this up so you can see how it works and then at least one person on your home network would be able to connect to everything. So I'm hopeful that this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks, guys.